I've always said that if I had one superpower in life, it would be the fact that I can fall asleep so quickly and so efficiently. And it takes me around three or four minutes, maybe seven to 10 minutes on a really bad day. So in this video, I wanna talk to you about why it is that I sleep seven hours every single day, whether I'm on vacation or I'm working, whether it's after a big night out or a regular night of Netflix and chill, and how it is that I'm able to fall asleep so easily. If you're new to the channel, then hi, my name is Nasser, and I'm now a final year medical student studying at King's College London, and let's talk about sleep. The reason that I sleep seven hours every single day is because I see sleep as a tick box exercise, something that I just need to do and need to get done so I can put it behind me and move on with the rest of my day. I don't particularly enjoy sleep. And when I wake up in the morning, I don't lay in bed. I don't check my phone in bed. As soon as I've sort of started to wake up and I've snoozed maybe one or two alarms, I just get up and begin my day. I personally think this is great. Seven hours is all the sleep that I need. And it gives me plenty of time throughout the rest of the day to complete all the activities that I want. So keeping up a social life, going to the gym, playing sports, attending medical school, filming videos for this YouTube channel and everything else. Having said all that, my goals with sleep are to be as efficient as possible. I want to go to bed at the right time when I've told myself that I need to, and then I want to fall asleep as quickly as possible. And then when I wake up in the morning, the time between waking up and getting out of bed, I want to be as small as possible. So let's talk about exactly how I do just that. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the one that's helped me the most, and that is having a radio alarm clock. A radio alarm clock has completely changed the way that I wake up and what my relationship looks like with sleep. It's something that I'm so surprised more people don't use already. Instead of hearing that really loud and jarring alarm clock sound that we're all used to, you can wake up to the smooth and calming voice of someone talking to you over the radio or your favorite music channel or whatever it is you choose to put there. But the point is waking up to a radio alarm clock of gradually increasing loudness and having someone talk to you is infinitely more more calm and just more pleasant in the morning when you wake up as opposed to that annoying, annoying alarm sound. Personally, this has made such a huge change for me when waking up in the morning. I find that I'm a lot happier, less groggy, and just more at ease. Honestly, that, that alarm sound, when I think of it now, just gives me nightmares. So a radio alarm clock is honestly fantastic. I could not more highly recommend it and I think everyone should be using one. The second thing that I wanna talk about is building routine when it comes to sleep. Personally, in my life, routine is so incredibly important and it permeates pretty much all aspects of my life from sleep to work to cooking to enjoyment, social life. I love having routine because it makes the decision-making process day-to-day -day so much easier. Personally, I've been taking a shower right before bed as literally the last thing that I do before bed for something like the last 15 years of my life. And so I'm incredibly conditioned as a person to have a shower and then fall asleep within the next 10 to 15 minutes or so. What this means is that every day after I have a shower, my brain and my body knows that it's time for bed and I instantly become more sleepy. And that saves me so much time from just jumping into bed with a fully awake mind and then having to sort of slow down and wind down while I'm in bed. In fact, I'm so conditioned by this that when I shower in the middle of the day, if I've gone for a run or after the gym or I'm just really hot and I need to cool down with a shower, I become very sleepy afterwards and I actually need a coffee after my shower midday just to stay awake and go back to normal. Now for you, you don't have to shower right before you go to bed. You can do anything that you want, but getting in this sort of habit of building a routine, something that is strongly associated with sleep time or bed can very effectively put you in the sleeping and tired mood, both in your brain and in your body, so that going to sleep becomes a lot easier. The third thing that I wanna to touch on is the use of our phones in bed. Now, stopping using your phone before bed is really, really difficult. And I think for the vast majority of people, using your phone in bed is something that's quite a pleasurable experience. It's something that you want to do and that you enjoy. And so completely cutting it out, I don't think is necessarily the right approach. Unless you're really, really addicted to your phone and you stay up for hours on end scrolling through social media right before bed, then yeah, probably put your phone on your desk or somewhere far away so that you don't use it. That might be better. But otherwise, I don't really see anything wrong with using your phone in bed as long as you have checks and balances in place to make sure that you're not on it for too long or you're not doing the types of activities that might wake up your brain too much. So personally, before I go to bed, I like to check my Twitter and my Instagram. And one of the things that I've done that really helps put these checks and balances in place for myself is that I follow very few people on my social media platform. So that means that when I get into bed and I check these apps, I spend maybe five to seven, maximum 10 minutes checking through those apps before I'm all up to date and there's nothing left for me to see anymore. And so in this way, I've sort of built like a cage around my social media usage because there's no point in me staying on the app anymore since I'm already caught up and I've seen everything up until this point. Another thing is that I've told myself not to watch YouTube videos in bed because YouTube videos generally I pay a lot more 
more attention to and I think about a lot more. And so that wakes my brain up and makes me more mentally active right before I'm trying to fall asleep. So as a general rule of thumb for myself, I don't watch any videos in bed. If I do want to watch a video at nighttime around when I'm going to sleep, then I watch that video in the shower so that I'm outside of my bedroom, I'm outside of my bed and it's in a completely separate sort of mental zone. And then once I come into bed, no more videos. Now for you, obviously you might have different types of usage for your phone in bed, but I encourage you to look at what it is that you do on your phone before you sleep and think about whether that's keeping you up at night, making your brain active and working and sort of preventing you from having a quick and healthy, easy and comfortable sleep at night. You can set your own rules that sort of close you in and prevent you from using your phone or your social media too much while in bed and keeping you up at night. All right, so the next point that I wanna talk about is what I like to call the go to sleep method. Now the go to sleep method is something that I have made up. It has absolutely no backing in science or anything else like that. It's just something that I do that I personally find very, very, very helpful in going to bed. What is the go to sleep method? Basically, when it comes to falling asleep, I think we can all relate to the fact that the reason that we stay up or that we can't fall asleep or that we have difficulty falling asleep is that our mind is continuously thinking about something. So my goal with this method is to prevent my mind from thinking, thinking about what that specific thing is, but also thinking in general, because if I'm thinking about anything, then I'm not focusing on going to sleep. So literally, whenever I'm having difficulty falling asleep, I do the exact same thing. I repeat the three words, go to sleep, over and 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 over again. Now what this does is it floods all the parts of my brain that would be free to think about anything else and it confuses it and overwhelms it with the three words, go to sleep. Go to sleep, 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 go to sleep. And if you try this right now when watching this video or when going to sleep later tonight, you'll find that you basically cannot think about anything else you physically don't have the brain capacity to have any other thoughts or go down any rabbit holes in your mind. And so as weird and strange as it sounds, I find that this helps me fall asleep literally 100% of the time, every time when I'm having difficulty falling asleep, if ever. I realize how crazy and weird it sounds, but trust me, if you're having difficulty falling asleep, just give this a go and let me know in the comments when it works for you. Now, another thing that I wanna talk about is showering before bed. Now, personally, I find that showering before bed helps me immensely as a 10 minute break to completely cleanse your mind from any thoughts that you're having. Just literally stand under the water, you know, clean yourself and you just get to relax. You just get to chill. When I'm sitting here in my room and I'm sitting in front of this screen on my desk, I'm constantly thinking about work. Constantly, constantly, constantly. You know, if I'm on the phone, if I'm answering an email, if I'm sending a message, I'm constantly thinking about stressful things. So either work for medical school or work for this YouTube channel or whatever. And so when I get in the shower, at the end of my day, I literally have 10 minutes of just absolute to think about whatever I want, to relax, to sort of wipe my slate clean and reset my mind, reset my brain before getting into my bed and going to sleep. So this is sort of like a ritual for me to sort of relax and unwind at the end of the day and get a completely clean slate before getting into my bed. The point that I'm trying to make is that if you have sort of this protected time, 10 minutes of just protected time, no one can talk to you, no one can email you, no one can message you, 10 minutes of utter silence and relaxation before going to bed, I think it would do absolute wonders for helping fall asleep. Next, let's talk about caffeine consumption. Now, caffeine consumption is something that is incredibly important that a lot of people don't pay too much attention to in relation to their sleep and sleeping habits. Personally, I think I'm really, really lucky in the sense that I can drink coffee at 11 at night, 12 at night, and just go to sleep 10 minutes later, 30 minutes later with pretty much no problem at all. In fact, I'm pretty sure coffee has no effect on me and doesn't help me wake up. This is just a theory that I have because I feel like I drink coffee and if I want it to keep me awake, it'll help me stay awake. And if I want to go to sleep, then I'll just ignore the coffee and fall asleep. So yeah, anyways, small tangent, but this scenario is really for the minority of people. The vast majority of people have significant and real effects from caffeine consumption. I have plenty of friends and family who simply do not drink anything that contains caffeine after 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m., whatever it is for them, because they know that it's gonna keep them awake at night and it's gonna prevent them from falling asleep easily. So the important thing from this point is to ask yourself, how does caffeine affect me and my energy levels, my alertness, and my sleep? And if it's something that you haven't thought about before and you are having difficulty sleeping, I would really suggest cutting caffeine out from the later hours of your day or even as early as the afternoon, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., and seeing if that helps you sleep later on at night. Caffeine has a ridiculously long half-life. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it stays in your body for a really long time. And so it's very plausible that a cup of coffee you have at 1 p.m. still has caffeine effects on you when you're going to sleep at like 11 or 12 at night. So definitely take a moment to reflect on your own caffeine consumption and how it might be affecting your sleeping habits. And then the very last thing that I do right before I go to bed, the final, final act before I go to sleep is I set my alarm. I literally take my phone, I look at what the time is right now, I add seven hours to that time, 
I set the alarm and then I go to sleep. It gives me a lot of comfort and rest to know that I'm going to be awake in seven hours from now. I don't really need to think about sleeping in too much or sleeping too little. I just know that in my life, generally speaking, I'm going to be sleeping seven hours no matter what the day is, no matter where I am, whether I'm holiday, whether I'm here working, whatever, I'm gonna sleep seven hours. And that just honestly makes me feel really comfortable and happy just knowing the fact that there's this sort of set routine that's gonna happen every single day of my life and I don't really need to think about do I want to sleep more today don't want to sleep less today I'm just gonna sleep seven hours now throughout the years and within certain years I will change from having just one alarm to wake me up in the morning to having something like four alarms to wake me up in the morning and I haven't really figured out what causes these changes but I'm always striving to just have one alarm but I don't always make it so I set up backups just in case but generally speaking I've got the radio alarm clock and then five minutes later I get that phone alarm to just tell me hey get out of bed right now. All right, and I think that is pretty much it. That's everything that I wanted to mention about sleep. That is everything that enables me to fall asleep within honestly like three to four minutes most nights. I feel like I need to knock wood about this. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and hopefully it helped you learn a thing or two that will help you fall asleep easier in the future. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to leave a like on it and also subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.